In this Learning Byte video for Windows Home Server 2011, we're going to do an overview of the dashboard. To get started, select Dashboard from the Launchpad. This will allow you to type in your Windows Home Server password. From here you can decide whether you want to remember that for future logins, and if you're having problems you can decide to disable a specific add-in. We're going to go ahead and select Remember My Password and log in. The Windows Home Server is a completely headless device. That means there's no keyboard, no mouse, no monitor connected to it. So all changes are done through the dashboard remotely from one of the home PCs. The dashboard is designed to make the Windows Home Server setup very simple. Right from the home screen we get a list of tasks that we can complete to configure our Windows Home Server for the first time. As you change a task or set the task up, it will go from a gray check mark to a green check mark. The user tab gives us a quick reference to all the users that have been set up on our home server who has authorization to which shared folder, whether a user can access the remote web access website, and even if the user has been disabled. As we select the various users, our options on the right will change and our description down below will also follow suit. We also have a couple extra tasks down below here. This is where we can add the user, or we can set password policies for the users. Currently our settings set to weak. This allows users to have a blank password. We can increase this to force users to be able to log into the Windows Home Server. They must have at least a five character password. We can go further with this and increase the complexity to include letters, numbers, and symbols. And we can also increase it from five characters to seven. Under the Computers and Backup tab, we get a list of all the computers that have been connected to our Windows Home Server whether they've been backed up successfully and if they have any alerts. We can also see our home servers on this list as well. We can set up specific backups for our Windows Home Server and their shared folders. We get a quick description down below of what the operating system is, what service pack it has installed, and if it's 64-bit or 32-bit. On the right, we can restore files and folders. We can set up backups for the server or for the specific PC and we can even configure a backup to start now. We can remove a computer from our Windows Home Server as well as change the server password. The Servers, Folders, and Hard Drive tab gives us a quick reference list of all the shared folders that are on our home server. They let us know where they're located on what specific drive and how much free space they have. Just like previous, we get a quick description of that shared folder if we entered one. We can choose to move that folder onto a different hard drive or even add a new folder. If we want to, we can open the folder right from the dashboard as well. Under the Hard Drives tab, we get a quick list of the hard drives that are installed on our Windows Home Server. From here, we can view properties of that specific drive. A couple additional options we get under here is Drive Cleanup and Check and Repair. We can also go to Shadow Copies, where we can make sure that that's enabled if we wanted to use previous versions. Under the Add-ins tab, we get a quick reference list of all of our add-ins that have been installed on our Windows Home Server. For example, My Movies is here. If we want to remove My Movies, we could right-click and select Remove, or we can even get additional help for this specific add-in. After add-ins are installed, they may add an additional tile, as you can see up in the top right here. The dashboard provides a quick reference of how our network health is doing. Our network health right now is not doing very well. As you can see, a couple of machines do not have fire scanners enabled. Their firewalls are turned off. A few updates need to be installed. Our home server is even having problems. Just recently, it was rebooted abruptly without a proper restart. It also needs to be activated. We can utilize the alert viewer to actually go ahead and complete some of these tasks or ignore the alert if we choose. For deeper management, we can go into Service Settings, where we can see a list of different options. We can make sure our home service date is correct, and this is very helpful for backups. We can also do updates if something new has come out. Down at the bottom, we can see that our Windows Home Server needs to be activated. The left gives us a few pages we can select from. Media allows us to share media from our shared folders to DLNA devices. Home group allows us to connect to a home group if it already exists as it shows here, or we can even create one if one does not already exist. The Remote Web Access tab allows us to enable Remote Web Access and to configure it. Down at the bottom, 
we have an option to reboot our server correctly or even to shut it down. For additional help with add-ins, we can select Help. We can also go to Safe Mode Settings. We can choose a specific add-in if it's causing problems and set it to be disabled. This is helpful for troubleshooting rather than uninstalling a specific add-in. We can just disable it and see if that's helped with things. That concludes our overview of our Windows Home Server Dashboard Learning Byte video. For a deeper dive on specific items inside the dashboard, please look for future Learning Bike videos.